Hi friends and welcome to another fun video. In today's tutorial we will set up a complete parametric u-shaped steel sheet pile from Nippon Steel. Just like the picture in this brochure shows. We go ahead and open up a fresh metric generic model family template to create the one single nested plate before setting it all together to an array. But first thing first, as I teach in my introduction family creation, we set up the reference planes that will work as the skeleton and framework for our geometry. These reference planes will constrain and hold the geometry in place. Almost done with the reference planes, we'll just mirror these three planes around the center line. Next step involves adding dimensions lines to our reference planes. These annotations carry the load dynamically adjusting the reference planes as dimension values changes. We do press the EQ button because we want the geometry to move evenly across the center. It makes the arraying easier and simpler later on. Next phase is the brain phase. Here is where all the parameters and formulas that empower us to manipulate the dimensions are created. I do set the parameters as type parameter since it's easier to use when working with nested families in array. Watch my video on the differences between type and instance parameter. Additionally, I place the parameters within the dimensions category. It is crucial to maintain a well-organized parameter system. For example, parameters in this category are intended for end-user modification, while parameters with formulas, for example, function in the background of the family and are not intended for the end-user to change, I place in the other category. Also worth mentioning, it is possible to move the parameters up and down the list and I would like to place the parameters that will most likely be, be most used by the end user at the top of the group. Next, link the parameters to our dimensions by selecting the dimension line. Navigate to the top menu and choosing the relevant parameter from the label options. Repeat this process for all dimensions so we now control reference planes with our parameters. Our brain controls the muscles. Last step in the process of creating this nested family component is the visible part, the actual geometry, the skin. So after constructing the skeleton, empowering the muscles and fine-tuning the brain, we finalize the family by adding the visible element for the end user. So personally I prefer to position these elements or lines adjacent to the reference planes rather than directly on top of them. This approach offers I think better control when aligning the geometry to the reference planes later on or like we do now because you see actually see the geometry being locked to the reference planes giving full control of the geometry. We have now used the align tool for this bit tedious work. Also worth mentioning we always constrain our geometry to the reference planes and not geometry to geometry. It will help maintain stability and integrity of the family. No errors. And make sure when aligning to press the little lock. Very important. We just uh, continue to draw up our geometry. Okay, so here I'm dimensioning inside geometry sketch mode and I'm connecting it to the thickness parameter. I usually try to avoid doing this because it will create a more unorganized and in general messy family. But sometimes we have to break the rules. We go ahead and change the parameter values to check if everything works as intended. This operation is called flexing and I would recommend doing it regularly when developing a complex family so you don't end up at the end with a highly advanced family that don't work. It's gonna be a nightmare to find all the errors. We do a little bit of cleanup, making the family a bit more presentable. So let's open up the parameter window and add a formula for our slope. I'm adding it as a factor from the width, but you can of course make it a parameter to be edited by the end user. So all done with this nested component. 
which will be a part of an array. We save it with a logical name on the desktop for easy access. We then go ahead and start a new family. This will be our host family and where we finalize our steel sheet pile. Select a metric generic line based template because the array will follow a line. We then load in the nested component into the host family. Okay, so forgot one thing in the nested family, connecting the height parameter to a dimension line. We do that um, very quickly and load it into the host family. And we are back on track. Next, we are setting up our reference planes in the host family, which will constrain the nested family. So here is another major benefit of using a nested component. It acts as one single unit, making it easier to control and it provides access to the center line of our object. So we can align the center of our family with the reference planes, which is a key to working with arrays. We are now at dimension lines, which I will later connect to the parameters I'm now creating. So as of now, the parameters created in the nested family are not accessible to the end user if we load it into the main Revit project. So we need to create the same parameters inside the host family that we want the end user to access from the nested family. In addition, we add parameters that will control the array. These parameters are placed in the older category since they will not be edited by the end user, but rather just work in the background when the user changes the length. What I want my array to be is an array with fixed spacing and user-defined length. When dragging to the exact length, the array automatically updates because of the parameters I just created and placed in the other group. We add some numeric values to the parameters. Without a valid value, we would not be able to connect the parameters from the host family to the nested family. The other parameters will be controlled by formulas, which is based on the user-defined parameters. So we proceed to connect the parameters with the host family. This is an important step. Without it, the parameters in the host family will not be accessible to the end user in the main Revit project. When that is done, we move back to the plan view and start creating our array. I'll be using the move to second option in the array bar. This setting specifies the spacing between each member of the array. Additional array members appear after the second member. And remember, it is the second member of the array in relation to the first member that will determine how the array will be. So I will focus on aligning and constraining members 1 and 2 of our array. It will be a total of two arrays to form our steel sheet pile to the desired outcome. We then associate our established dimension lines with the parameters. And as we do it, we can see the array components are connecting and hanging together. Next up, we connect the array number to the array parameter. We mark our array and find the parameter in our top bar. For some reason, the array parameter is a bit hidden. Don't know why Revit want to hide the parameter, but it is what it is. We associate it with the array number. For this parameter, we will be utilizing formula and basic math to decide how many elements will be in the array based on our user-defined length and the width of each nested elements. Do that to both of the arrays. We're doing some flexing to see what happens. And it works as intended. We proceed to save it and load it into the main project. So, now standing in the main Revit project 3D view, we find our steel sheet pile family in the project browser under generic models and drag it out. As you can see, when we drag the length, the number of arrays automatically updates to match the length because of the formula we created in the family. Let's change some of the parametric values to see if our family respond as we want. And as I can see, it respond just like we intend. Before ending this tutorial, let's take a quick look at the steel sheet pile set profile I've made earlier. This steel sheet pile has a bit more detailed connection than the U profile, but the family is still parametric. When changing the thickness, the detailed connection are changing with it. And that concludes this tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe 
for more fun videos. And thank you for watching.